In December 2022, 91-year-old TSMC founder Morris Chang stood in front of a giant factory in Phoenix, Arizona, and the audience were the most powerful semiconductor decision-makers on the planet, Apple CEO Cook, NVIDIA founder Huang Jensen, AMD chairman Lisa Su, Micron CEO Sanjay Marotra, ASML CEO Peter Wenink. Of course, there is also US President Biden who is over 80 years old. They came together for TSMC's 3 nanometers fab. Everyone present was happy, but Morris Chang was sad. He understands that this is probably the brightest moment for semiconductors in Taiwan, but it is also the saddest moment. He briefly reviewed the history of TSMC in the United States, and then murmured a famous sentence, globalization is almost dead, at least for a while, they will not come back. This sentence seems to be said for himself, it also seems to be said to the people of Taiwan. This big relocation has triggered a series of negative reactions in Taiwan, and there are endless voices criticizing TSMC. Therefore, relevant people from TSMC were forced to come out and clarify repeatedly, saying that TSMC will still keep the most advanced process technology on the island. The one nanometer process is confirmed to land in the Longtan Park in Hsinchu, and the total investment may exceed 32 billion US dollars. After hearing this, the people of Taiwan feel relieved. They think one nanometer is equal to one third of three nanometers. TSMC's capacity is three times that of U.S. semiconductor manufacturing company. TSMC is still the pride of Taiwan. But for more people, the one nanometer process itself is a confusing concept. From the perspective of the microscopic limit, the diameter of a silicon atom is less than 0.12 nanometers. And the one nanometer process means the size of 8.5 silicon atoms. Considering that our chip technology and algorithm capabilities are not at the level of quantum computers, let alone solve various engineering problems of anti-Newtonian mechanics at the quantum level, such a small technology is surprising enough. So, which part of the chip is the 1 nanometer, 3 nanometers, 5 nanometers, and 10 nanometers process chips produced by TSMC? Therefore, in my opinion, 1 nanometer chips only exist in university labs and will not appear in any fabs in the short term. In 2019, the person in charge of TSMC's R&D made such an admission in a forum. The ex-nanometer statement describing the process level is no longer scientific. The process node has become a marketing game, which has nothing to do with the characteristics of the technology itself. For TSMC, this is a marketing game, but for consumers, it is more like a colluding scam. Strictly speaking, since the 1990s, the method of naming process nodes with nanometers has been bankrupt for 30 years. From 5 nanometers to 3 nanometers, just like iPhone 13 to 14, it is just a marketing meaning for technology generational distinction, without any real engineering meaning. In theory, there is actually only one source of legitimacy for this process node naming. The number of transistors doubles in each generation. But even so, people have gradually discovered that different wafer factories have different standards for doubling. Taking the transition from 14 nanometers to 10 nanometers as an example, Intel, Samsung, and TSMC have disputes over the naming route. In order to abide by the rules of Moore's law, Intel insisted on consecutively naming the subsequent two generations of chips 14 plus and 14 plus plus. On the other hand, Samsung and TSMC directly named their products 10 nanometers, catering to the replacement aesthetics of the consumer market. But at that time, the gap between the chip capabilities of the two camps was not even an intergenerational gap, so an interesting scene in the history of chips appeared, under the same process name. Intel seemed to be a generation ahead of its counterparts, however. The speed at which TSMC and Samsung are coming to the next generation seems to be more than one generation ahead of Intel. At that time, many media and institutions pointed out that according to the standards of TSMC and Samsung, Intel's 14nm plus product line can actually be called 12 nanometers. Intel's subsequent 10 nanometers chips performed even better than TSMC's 7 nanometers chips. Intel also took out a large parameter comparison table of the 10 nanometers process at the media communication meeting, implying the marketing lies of its competitors. 
But when Intel completed 10 nanometers mass production, TSMC's 5 nanometers production line was already under construction. This increasingly misleading marketing rhetoric can easily cause ordinary people to misunderstand chip manufacturing capabilities. On the one hand, it is easy for ordinary people to get an overly optimistic and unrealistic impression of human materials and technology. On the other hand, as the name of the process becomes more and more exaggerated, it is easy for ordinary people to draw the pessimistic conclusion that the development of the chip process has reached the extreme. After all, if one day the process naming method is close to the atomic size, do we have to cut the atomic nucleus to make a wafer? Over the past two decades, the death and continuation of Moore's law has been discussed countless times. And the essence of this discussion, its subtext all point to the understanding of Moore's law. Supporters believe that the number of transistors has roughly doubled, so Moore's law is still alive, while opponents believe that Moore's law should first be a cost formula, implying the inclusiveness of IT technology. To take it to the extreme, if we were to make small batches of extremely expensive chips with extremely high transistor densities in the lab, which in fact already exist in many university labs, it would have nothing to do with Moore's law. Nanoprocess nodes, rather than transistor density, can represent the development of Moore's law in the early days, which implies the pursuit of this technological balance. But now, nanonodes have played a kind of fig leaf role. People pretend that Moore's law still exists, but actually bypass Moore's law. The radical and progressive attitude has higher requirements for all parties in the link. So we found that the temperature control of the chip is getting more and more difficult. It is obviously a 5 nanometers chip, but it is much hotter than 10 nanometers. We gradually found that the flagship chip is getting more and more expensive, and the price of the corresponding terminal equipment is also increasing. According to some media citing institutional research data, the cost of chip development under various processes is increasing geometrically. The 28 nanometers process costs $42.8 million. The 22 nanometers process costs $63 million. The 16 nanometers process requires $89.6 million. In the later stage, chip development is a special field for giants, 7 nanometers, 248.6 million US dollars, 5 nanometers, 448.7 million US dollars, 3 nanometers, 581.1 million US dollars, 2 nanometers requires 724.8 million US dollars. And this is only the development cost of the chip company. For the wafer foundry, the construction investment cost of the production line is even higher. The investment in building a 28 nanometers fab is 6 billion US dollars, but the investment in a 5 nanometers fab is as high as 15 billion US dollars. And the cost of building a 3 nanometers production line is 15 billion US dollars to 20 billion US dollars. TSMC recently announced its investment in a 1 nanometer factory, with an investment scale of up to 32 billion US dollars. A number of overseas technology media reported that Qualcomm and MediaTek did not even rule out abandoning the 2 nanometers chip process because the fab's quotation was too expensive. We are in a post more era entering a brand new technological environment. From this perspective, Nano is more like a prehistoric legend of this era. It is vivid, ancient, and represents the technical qualities of the good times, but it is difficult to come back. Well, thanks for your listening, and please be free to put your comments below and share your insightful ideas. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that are worth spreading every day. See you.